Hello everyone, I'm Dimitris and today I will show you 5 ways to decouple your business logic from its dependencies in C++. Implementations tightly coupled to their dependencies are difficult to maintain, reuse and test. In this video we will illustrate different techniques you can employ to get rid of this problem. Overall, a good indicator over the effectiveness of a decoupling is testability. If you are able to test your class and your class only without being influenced by the inner details of the various dependencies, then you know you have done a good job. Let's begin with some coupled code we will try to fix. Here we have the camera power controller. The class is tasked with talking over UART with a microcontroller that is responsible for turning on and off the power circuitry of the product. To achieve this, it depends on the ASIO Serial Port Manager class. The ASIO Serial Port Manager class, as its name implies, uses the ASIO third-party library to handle communication via the serial port. In the camera power controller implementation, we invoke the constructor of ASIO Serial Port Manager with some arguments. These arguments are determined based on logic residing within the class. Then we call the instantiated class in the other member functions like turn on and turn off. So here's the problem. Whenever we invoke constructors of other classes, we become coupled to them. This is a red flag in regards to the testability and reusability of the class. Testability is decreased by invocation of constructors of other classes because we become obligated to indirectly test them as well along with the unit we actually want to test. To make things worse, compiling and running a binary that involves those other classes we are coupled with may be cumbersome or even impossible in our unit testing environment. For example, they may not be compatible for the host platform that runs the unit tests. This is common when dependencies include resources that are destined for a different operating system or architecture. Additionally, even if the dependent classes are compilable, it may be impossible to execute them on our host platform. This is due to them requiring some very specific resources that are only found on the target system. In our case, the ASIO Serial Port Manager class needs to open a connection to a serial device that will only exist on the target we are developing for and not on the developer's computer. This means that if we would like to unit test our camera power controller class and have the unit test running on our development machines, there is no other option than decoupling it from ASIO Serial Port Manager. Technique number one. Dependency injection based on class hierarchies and polymorphism. In my opinion, the cleanest way to decouple dependencies is to inject their abstractions and use those instead. If such abstractions do not already exist, this means that you have to define an interface that represents the business value these dependencies offer in a rather generic way. Next, you should have the dependency you need, inherit or implement it. Finally, make the constructor of the class under test receive the interface as an argument. Let's see how that would look in practice. First, we create a generic abstraction for classes that send data over serial, the serial port manager. Second, we make the ASIO serial port adapter implement the interface. Third, we inject a child of our serial port manager to our camera power controller. Now there is nothing specific to the ASIO library, we are effectively decoupled from it. Since we are injecting dependencies, it's a good idea to follow the inversion of control principle all the way. The serial port configuration, namely the baud rate and the device, are probably not a concern of the camera power controller class. We should move this logic to our integration scope, that is our main function. Technique number two, dependency injection using class templates. You can use this variant of the first technique if many levels of indirection and virtual functions are not desirable. This, for example, can be due to strict requirements on performance. 
Injecting your dependencies via the constructor is still the way to go, however, this time you will not use a class hierarchy. Instead, you can use a class template to determine the type of the constructor argument. This allows for a looser coupling that is determined by the one that instantiates the class, namely the integration scope, and not the class itself. As long as the template type implements an API equivalent to the ACO serial port manager, then our coupling remains only in the design level. This is not ideal, but can be good enough considering the constraints. Technique number three, dependency injection of an abstract factory. This is yet another variant of the previous techniques. You can use it if there are really good reasons to give a class control over its resources. In that case, it may not be possible to instantiate the dependencies in the integration scope as we previously did. This is because some information that reside within the class that uses them are required. A good example is the original camera power controller constructor. ASIO Serial Port Manager requires two arguments to be passed to its constructor that are owned by the class that uses it. To be honest with you, I usually consider this a design smell. However, if you are really convinced something like this makes sense, then you can inject an abstract factory class to keep your implementation decoupled from its dependencies. The abstract factory class takes the arguments that would have otherwise been supplied to the concrete class's constructor and returns an instance of the concrete class. The trick is that our class depends on an abstraction returned by the factory function call and not a particular implementation. This technique allows camera power controller to maintain ownership of the resources needed for the instantiation of the dependency but no longer depends on it. Technique number four, switch dependency implementations during link time. Occasionally, it may not be feasible or practical to refactor existing code, but you still wish to break the coupling between the implementation and its dependencies. What you can do is continue depending on the same declarations during compile time, but replace the definitions of your dependencies when linking. No change to the code will be necessary since it will still depend on the same APIs. Instead, when linking, you can provide an alternative implementation that satisfies the same API. The magic happens on the configuration level. Initially, our camera power controller target is tightly coupled to the ACO serial port manager one on the configuration level. To break the dependency to the ACU serial port manager target, we instead depend on the ACU serial port manager interface, which only includes the necessary header files. This means that compilation will work exactly as before. However, we still need the actual definitions during linking to build the binary. The definitions will be supplied in the integration scope namely the target that builds the executable. The link switch main target, as the one that creates the executable, is responsible for bringing everything together and thus making sure that the necessary resources are available for linking. This is eventually the target that depends on Asia Serial Port Manager. After decoupling, you can provide alternative implementations for the dependencies that will run on different platforms, for example, different product variants or during unit tests. Don't forget to check out how you would test this on the GitHub repository. Technique number five, switch dependency implementations using class templates. This is a variant of the previous technique that requires the templatization of the camera power controller class. Instead of relying on the configuration to do the switch during linking, you will do this during compile time using templates. Camera Power Controller is not coupled to the implementation of Asia Serial Port Manager, but something that behaves exactly like one. This means that we can create variants by using different types 
during the camera power controller template class instantiation. These were my five ways to decouple your business logic from its dependencies in C++. Do you have any alternatives? I'd love to learn more about them, so please feel free to leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe for more content like this. Stay safe and keep writing code decoupled from its dependencies.